In the following tutorial, we are going to talk about how to plan for game environments and level designs. I'm going to cover the entire workflow. Pre-production blueprint is the idea of planning the entire process from beginning to end and coming up with a document to use for your production stage. I never begin working on a project unless I've gone through planning. It helps me to know what I want to create before I open any level editor or a 3D application. It helps me to set the foundation to work with. And it gives me confidence to pursue the idea. Now there are a lot of questions that need to be answered when you create a game environment or a level design. And any time that I jumped right into a level editor before I figured anything out it usually resulted in an unfinished project. So once I've started to go through the planning stages, I could begin working on an idea with a lot more confidence and knowing what I wanted to create. So let's begin. The first step is the idea. Everything begins with a simple idea that you have, something that you want to build and create inside the game engine. The important part about ideas is to be always aware when they come to you. Ideas can come from books, movies, TV shows you watch, photography that you see, various architecture styles, your life experience, history, concept art, traditional paintings. So I would highly recommend that you get a sketchbook or a notepad to keep your ideas in and always carry it with you. So anytime you have an idea, you can write it down and always have it. I've lost many ideas without writing them down, thinking that I'll remember them later which of course I didn't. So the key question you want to ask is what do you want to create? Once you have an idea, you want to define a purpose and a set of features for your environment. This is why you want to create this environment or this map. What are the reasons? What is the purpose? For example, you may want to create an environment to explore. This could be a portfolio piece or this could be to improve a certain process, for example, texturing, Maybe you want to work on getting better at lighting, blocking in. Whatever your purpose is, it will help you to drive the entire production stage of your environment. You will have a reason to go through and complete your environment. A set of features is a list of elements that you want to include inside your environment, inside your map. This list of features will define how unique and how different your environment is and what you want to include that will make your map stand out from the rest. The best idea that I can give you about setting features is to go to a website where they sell games. So for example if you go to Amazon.com and you read product features and product description this will give you a very clear idea of what a set of features will look like for a game. And what you want to do is you want to set the same kind of features for your game environment or for your level design. What makes your game environment unique? What makes it stand out from the rest? And what do you want to include to make your game environment different than anything else out there? Next step is to define location and environment setting. So you have your idea and then you've defined a reason that you want to complete that idea. And you have a set of features that will make your environment unique and different. Location and environment setting is the actual place of your environment, of your map. Where does it take place? When you set a location and environment setting, you want to be very specific. You want to know exactly where your map takes place. Is it an urban setting? Is it a rural landscape environment? Is it an industrial setting? And then you want to narrow it down. So if you have a rural landscape setting, you want to know exactly where it takes place. What state? What city? The more you can narrow it down to a specific location, a specific environment setting, and it will help you the rest of the planning stage as well as production stage. This will help you to collect better reference because you will know exactly what you need to look for, what kind of emotional impact you want to set, what kind of props you will need. So the more specific you are by your location and environment setting of your environment, the better decisions you will be able to make throughout the rest of the planning stages and production stage. The next step is to collect photo reference. Once you know the location and environment setting of your environment, collecting photo reference will be a lot easier. You will know exactly what you need to go search for for your environment. Photo reference can be split up into various categories. They include environment and location reference, set design and props, lighting and style, and inspirational reference. As you begin to collect your reference, focus on each category 
and collect as much photo reference as you need to be sure how your environment will look. So reference will be very helpful during production stages when you're blocking in your environment, when you're texturing, when you're modeling, when you're detailing and lighting your map. Next is you want to create a story. There are two types of stories that you want to focus on. The first one is the story of your environment. What happened in the environment prior to the player getting there? And the second part of creating a story is story of how the character came to that environment. What is the player doing there? These two types of stories will help to define the purpose of your environment. It will help you to place props, texture the environment, set up objectives, obstacles, create set pieces. So write the history about your environment. How did it come to be? What is the player doing within that environment? Why are they there? The next part is to create objectives, set up obstacles, and create set pieces. Objectives are player's goal, and obstacles are opposition that stand in the player's way. And this is a very common formula for many single player games, is you have an objective to achieve, and for that objective to be achieved, there's an obstacle that you have to overcome. What set pieces are, are scripted events. These are for single player maps, for multiplayer maps, or a standalone game environment. What these set pieces allow you to do is to add and enrich player experience within the game. Modern Warfare 3 is a perfect example, as well as Half-Life 2, for various set pieces within the map. This adds to the player's experience within the environment. Next step is to begin creating a top-down layout. This is a top-down view of your environment. This helps to get an overall idea of the layout of the map, where the buildings are going to go, how the player is going to navigate through the environment, where the objectives are going to be, where obstacles are going to happen, where plot points within the story of your environment will unfold, and the overall spatial relationship of various buildings, architectural elements, and landscape within your world. The depth of your top-down layout will be determined by if you're creating a single player, a multiplayer, or a standalone game environment. So for example, if you're creating a multiplayer map, you only have to focus on the spawn points of each team or each player, the layout of the world of the map, where certain choke points are going to happen, where the objectives need to be if your map has objectives. As opposed to if you're creating for a single player map, you have to focus on the player paths, the objectives, where AI and obstacles are going to happen along the way, where you want the story to unfold, maybe you'll have cinematics and where and how you want to show them at which point of the map. So there are various different things to consider when you're creating for a specific type of environment. So the way I create a top-down layout is I begin to look over everything I've collected before. I look at my location, environment setting, I look at the reference, I look at the story, and I begin to draw using pen and paper of uh, a possible layout of how I want to design the layout for the environment. I usually go through multiple iterations, reworking, and working really quick to get the idea down. I don't erase at this stage, I just try to put my mind on paper as quickly as possible. Once I have an overall layout, I scan it inside Photoshop and I clean it up. Now you can skip the entire step of drawing and just jump into Photoshop and begin to create a layout there. But I like to work on a piece of paper because it gets my ideas on the paper a lot quicker than uh, messing around with Photoshop. Now, when I scan the drawing inside Photoshop, I begin to clean it up and really focus on the spatial relationship of the environment, of how the player is going to navigate through the environment, if there are any objectives, where I want them to happen, where the obstacles are going to be, and various choke points within the environment where the player will have to encounter opposition. Another very important part of pre-production and planning is to decide on various focal points of your environment. Focal points are important visual landmarks of your location. There are several reasons for focal points in your environment. One is for the player to orient themselves within your environment. The player will always know where they are in relationship to the focal point. Two is the visual aesthetic quality. This will make your map stand out to have visual appeal to your environment. And three, it often helps to draw attention to that location within the environment, making the player go there. 
Skyrim is a great example of various focal points within a huge landscape. The next step is visual development. Visual development is the art direction that's usually done through concept art by concept artists. It is the look and the visual aesthetic style of your environment. It often sets the mood, the emotional impact, as well as color palette, architecture, landscape, scale, anything that helps to create how your environment will look in the finished stage. The final step is to begin making lists. These lists are everything that you will need to create your game environment or your level design. What models do you need? Do you need to create them yourself? Or can you use assets that already came with the level editor of your choice? What textures, what materials do you need? Do you need to create them? Or can you use the ones that are available to you? What about production process? What will be the steps that you will go through from beginning to end and how will you map your production stage? What will you do first, second, third, until the final piece is done? So lists are very important. I always create lists. They help me to know what I need to do, what I need to create, and what I need to collect. In the end, you end up with a pre-production blueprint. It is the foundation on which the entire production of your environment will be built on. You will know exactly what your environment is, how it's going to look, and how you'll be able to pull it off based on all the planning that you've done. Pre-production blueprint is the entire process of planning for level designs and game environments. And if you are interested in finding out more about pre-production blueprint, go and visit worldofleveldesign.com slash pre-production blueprint to find out more about it.